The Krieging method originated in geostatistics and is widely used to predict the value of a random variable throughout an area. After collecting samples from a set of locations in an area, Kriegen can be used to estimate the values at unsampled locations and then create a map of the estimated values across the whole area. Our data set contains measurements of exchangeable potassium collected by Rothamsted Research at Broom's Barn Experimental Station. Soil samples were collected from 435 locations across a 77 hectare field. To import this data, select Data, Load, ASCII File. Browse to the file location and open the Krieg1 file. We'll display the data in a spreadsheet and type some appropriate names for the data columns. In our spreadsheet, each row gives a value for potassium at one of the 435 locations where samples were taken. The east and north columns give the distance in metres from the southwest corner of the area. We can visualise the data collection area by creating a 2D scatter plot. We'll use a single XY plot and choose the north and east columns as our y and x variates. I'm going to make these x symbols into circles and change the colour to make the measurement location stand out more. So here's our scatter plot of the data collection area and you can see there are some fairly large blank areas where no samples have been taken. If we look at the satellite view of Broom's Barn Farm, we can match features on this photo with the data-free zones. This rectangular area on the left indicates some farm buildings, and this empty patch on the right is an access road. Down here, these dark green areas correspond to the data-free zones on our scatter plot, and this long area on the left marks the boundary where a road separates the farm from neighbouring fields. Let's now draw a 3D scatter plot to show how the potassium levels vary across Broom's Barn Farm. First, we need to normalise our potassium variable, K, so we'll log transform it. Click the Calculate button and type the expression shown here. We'll save the result as log 10K and save it back to our spreadsheet. Now, draw the 3D scatter plot. Enter the variates as east, north, and log 10k. I'm going to change the colour of the symbols to red. Add axes titles. and use the full window to plot the graph. We can rotate the 3D plot by double-clicking the graph, cancelling the Edit dialog and clicking the hand symbol on the right-hand side. The X, Y and Z icons enable us to view from the two sides or above. You can see that there is quite a bit of variation in the measured potassium levels throughout the field. We'll form an experimental variogram as the first step of the Krieging method. Select Stats, Spatial Analysis, Form Variogram. The variogram is used to explore spatial dependence over an area. It does this by describing how much correlation there is between two samples. In particular, it estimates the variance between two samples separated by a given distance. You'd expect two samples separated by a short distance to be correlated, but those separated by a large distance to be uncorrelated. 
We'll fill in the fields, selecting Log 10K, then North and East for the Y and X positions. Enter 13 as the maximum lag in the X direction, lag being the distance separating two samples. Set step length to 1 and form the variogram in four directions, each summarising the semivariance across a 45 degree segment. We'll store the results of our experimental variogram. We want the ordered set of semivariances, the numbers of paired comparisons from which the semivariances have been computed, and the mean lag distances. A plot of the experimental variogram shows the estimated semivariance at different lag distances. As you'd expect, the variance increases as you increase the lag between sampling locations. Spatial variation is not necessarily the same in all directions. The graph allows us to assess whether the spatial variation is anisotropic by examining the variogram in four directions. Isotropic is when the variation is the same in all four directions. We'll model the variogram using the stored values we generated from the experimental variogram. We'll fill in the form, then select the spherical model and use the same set of directions as before. Clicking Run produces a variogram with spherical fitted model. The model variogram menu allows you to fit a range of different models to the experimental variogram to best describe the spatial variation. The model can then be used to predict values in unsampled locations using Kriging. The models are fitted using GenStat's nonlinear regression facilities, which produces output that can be used to assess the model fit and displays the model parameters to use within the Krieg menu. To perform the Kriging procedure, select Stats, Spatial Analysis, Krieg. I'll select the spherical model again and specify the locations. The Y and X inner bounds specify a rectangle of points, roughly matching the field size that we're going to predict values for. Enter the block length and height. We can find values for the nugget variance, range and cell variance fields in the output. These will be used to calculate the predictions. Copy the constant value into the Nugget Variance field. Copy parameter A into the Range field. Lastly, copy parameter C as the Sill Variance. Now click Options. The Radius and MinMax data points will determine which neighbouring points are used in the Kriegen calculations. Distance between successive interpolations specifies the interval used to identify the locations to predict. This is used with the yx inner bound values to form a grid of locations that will have values predicted. Click OK, then click Store. This dialog is used to save the results from Kriegen. By default, the predictions are saved in Temp Pretty, and the prediction variances in temp barrier. We'll keep the default names. Click OK, then click Run. We can visualize the Krieg estimates of log potassium in a contour plot. Select Stats, Spatial Analysis, Contour Plot. Select Temp Pretty to produce a contour plot of the log potassium estimates, then click Run. The contour plot uses a grayscale gradient to display the estimated values of log potassium. The light areas show where higher levels of exchangeable potassium are predicted to be. The numbers on the contour denote the estimated log potassium. For example, this contour curve at 4 gives locations where log potassium values are estimated to be 4. We can also produce a contour plot of the estimated variances.
If we compare this with pictures of the farm and scatter plot, our contour plot of the variances shows quite clearly that predictions for areas where there were no observations are more variable. The estimated variance is larger where we didn't have much data, here around the edges, and here where there were buildings. By contrast, in locations where we had a lot of data, the estimated variance is fairly constant.